Hey guys, we are back uh, in the afternoon show of the Virtual Developers Conference. It's uh, two minutes to 1400 hours Mauritian time. Uh, Girish and myself, Ish, we are back uh, and uh, I will let Girish introduce our next speaker. Girish, it's to you now. Yeah, so we have with us Nisha Apana, manager at the Ringer South Africa. We, we have introduced this uh, talk uh, in our last. Uh, it was a pre-recorded session, so yeah, we introduced it at the end. It was on build and program an interactive robot. So maybe I will uh, pass into Nisha. She could uh, talk a bit about herself and start the presentation. Thanks, Girish, for that intro. So as Girish mentioned, I'm Nisha Pana. I've been working for tech companies for over 15 years now. I've worn several hats over the years. And today, um, I'm product manager for Ringer South Africa. I chose the topic build and program a robot because I really believe this is going to be the tech of the future. And um, the objective is to ensure that all of you feel that you know you can create a, a robot at the end of the day. So after the end of my presentation, I hope you will know all the little steps required to do so. So let's dive in into the agenda. So first we will cover the 3D printing part. Uh, I will show you what are the components that you have to download and print on your 3D printer. Then uh, we will go ahead and assemble all those different like electronic components as well as the 3D printed parts. And finally, we will get into the fun coding part where you will get to make your little robot move. Right, so the agenda is simple, uh, just three items, and I hope that you know um, you'll get all the steps. So let's get into the 3D printing. So you have to go and first like download the STR files. Um, you know, you have to give credit where it's, deser where it's deserved. So the person who created those STR files, his name is Camilo Para Palacio. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. He's a product designer uh, and founder of Auto Do It Yourself. And I've put up the link as well at the bottom, uh, which is on Wicked Factory. So when you go to that link, you will see that um, you will have access to five STL files. So there will be one for the head, as you can see in the picture, one for the body, uh, one STL file for the legs and the arms. So you're going to print it four times because you just need one STL file for uh, the four items. Then there is one for the grip, you print this uh, twice, and then one for the foot. The next step after you've downloaded all your STL files is to make sure like you slice it. What that is, is that when you buy a 3D printer, you will get um, access to like a slicer. I personally have an Ender Free Pro, and um, the slicer that I'm doing is Quality Slicer. Um, so you go and you click on file, load model file, and then you load that STL file in your slicer. Um, it would appear as the image that you see here. So this is the, the feet of the robot. And um, so then you go and you click on um, save G code. The next thing that after you save the G code, you have to go ahead and prepare your printer. So um, this is a photo of the printer that I have at home. So you click on the little knob at the bottom and, um, and then you select prepare and then you preheat PLA. PLA is like your filament that you're going to use. Um, well, I'm using PLA. You can use other type of filaments as well. Um, after you preheat the filament, you have to load it in. So next to the extruder, you press the knob and then you push the filament in and you push it as far as you can. And at, at the bottom of the nozzle, as you can see in the screenshot, uh, you will see the filament, the melted filament uh, coming down. That's when you know that you, know, you have pushed it far enough. The next step, I'm assuming this is the first time that you're printing. Um, so you haven't leveled the bed yet. Um, some 3D printers available out there do the auto-leveling, mine do not. 
Um, so I had to manually go and uh, make sure that the bed was um, at the right level. So what you do is you have to bring the nozzle at the different spots. So number one, two, three, four, and five. Um, there's a jigger that uh, I had um, that would automatically move the um, nozzle for you, or you can manually do it as well. Then you put a piece of paper just between the nozzle and the bed, just to make sure you leave just like a, um, the space of a piece of paper. And this will ensure like, like your print quality um, is good because you shouldn't have too big of a space or too small of a space. So after you do, you do the bed leveling, you move on to the print, right? So you, you save your G code already into like a memory card. So you put that memory card into your printer and you click on um, any TF card and you open your, say I put like autohead.g code, for example, and you loaded it. Um, then hopefully you should get something like this when it's printing. So I put a little video of when I actually printed the head of my little robot. So that's how I should be. All right, so at the end of the day, you get that head next. OK, so you do that for all the components that I've showed you, but there could be um, like it could be that you could you want to modify it, which it was in my case. Like, um, yes, there was three designs available, but then those are still far, so you can go and customize it as you wish. What I, what I did at first was use FreeCAD. Um, it was a Windows application that I downloaded in order to make a hole inside the body. Then I found something that was actually much easier to use. I'm just going to show it to you quickly. So if I just bring this window in and click on create um, new design. So this is Tinkercad. Uh, I recently started using this and I found it quite nice in order to um, do your designs. Let me just load the body in. This is taking a, a while. It might be the, the internet connection. Okay, yeah. All right. So, so now that you have your body in, you can move it around um, like this, right? Um, you can you can uh, it. Um, so you select that you want to join this area. Then you can pull like whatever shapes that you want. Um, so we're going to be selecting like a box here because we wanted a, a little hole. This is for the screen that we want to add, actually. Then what you can do is you can actually push the shape in like this, and you will see that it goes inside. And we can use this to create the, the hole, right? So um, what you do next is select hole here. And then uh, you group it. So once you do this, already it's it's so fast, like it's so simple that you just like modify your your, your pretty shape that you had like you know um, that was free, and you can just like you know customize it as you want it. So that's pretty cool. And then you can just go and export to like the STL file and go and print it. So that's Tinkercad. And I think that's for me, this was the easiest um, free, free software that uh, I've, I've used so far. Feel free to comment on the YouTube channel regarding what you use uh, 
and what you like. Um, I'm happy to know if there are like more options that you fancy. So next is um, the assembling, right? So um, now you've printed all your uh, parts um, and we have to uh, assemble the little auto, which is on the right of the screen. So when you're gonna assemble auto, um, you will need some um, components such as um, the, the shield, the Arduino Nano, um, the OLED display, and six server motors. Then uh, you need the ultrasound sensor, a, a buzzer for sound, um, a switch, and 24 uh, female to female wires. Now, so the steps into assembling the, the body is you put um, the two server motors inside uh, on the left hand side and the right hand side of the body. Um, I've put the instructions on the right so that you can see how it goes in. Then um, you, the next thing was um, the legs that you would attach it to, to the body. Then we move on to the feet. So if I just play a little video, you can see that, you know, the building process. So here we just like you know, testing the server motors that we assembled for the body. Um, feet and legs. Okay. Next is um, putting in the hands together, and I'll just show a little video about that as well. So it's nice to do the, the testing, like, you know, gradually as you're building, just to make sure that um, everything uh, properly, because at the end of the of the robot, um, it's going to be more complicated to do that. So uh, as you're building, test your server motors and see if, like, all the movements are correct. Next is actually um, the brain, right? So we're going to put, um, you know, the, the shield as well as um, the Arduino Nano in, inside the head. And then luckily, like, you know, um, the instructions from how to do it yourself um, came in quite handy. Like, they will actually tell you uh, what pins, you know, you're going to put the servo motors in on the shield, right? So you can see that um, the right foot should go uh, at number five, the left foot should go at number four. And then you need to just ensure that your ground voltage and signal cable goes into the right place. And all that is indicated on, um, on the shield. So, um, so it's pretty straightforward, even if you don't have uh, a background in electronics, I think it's just, just follow the instructions and then, and then you're good to go. So um, something that's different from what the uh, instructions came with was we added um, an, an OLED display. Uh, and for this one, like, you know, you would have to connect the SEO, SDA, and um, yeah, and the, the bond cables correctly. But all this is indicated on the board as well. And, um, and then you have to put the bu buzzer and the battery and the switch. And the battery and the switch is used mostly like you could connect your robot to a USB cable and then, you know, it will have enough power to do the movement. 
but in case you don't want it to be connected to by USB and you just want to play it like you know on your table or some or something, then you can just use the batteries. So let's get into the coding side now. For further coding, um, you will have to download some libraries. So it comes with do-it-yourself libraries that you can get um, yeah, on GitHub. So you download the zip uh, source, and then you go into um, the ID and include the zip library, as I've shown in the screenshot here. The next library that we will need will be from Adafruit. So especially the Ad Adafruit SSD 1306, um, this is used for the OLED display and uh, in order to draw on it. So, and that one you usually include it by going to manage libraries and then selecting the library from there. So I, I like to like implement and test straight away instead of waiting to the end. So when I, whenever I like I add that library, I will run the examples that comes with that library just to make sure that um, everything is working fine and everything is connected, especially for the OLED display. Um, in case like you know you made a mistake somewhere, then um, the example is quite handy to make sure that um, this is running correctly. I do have a video of how the example looks like. I think this was a test for the OLED display that I ran. And then another cool example to run uh, from the auto library will be the auto all moves. It's like the different movement that auto can do. And, um, and that would just be like a good test. All right, so now let's draw on um, the OLED display. So this is this is the code to do that. Uh, I'm actually going to pull um, the ID. So if I go a new sketch, and so let's just um, test this out in order to do the initialization. So first, you would have to include all your header files and uh, initialize your some of the parameters. For example, you just zoom this in. Yep. So include all the libraries um, that we've just uh, added, and then initialize your screen, and um, and then run. This, this is an interesting line of code. Uh, I've hit this a number of times. This is when you start to, it allocates uh, memory. Uh, you're quite limited in terms of memory when you're coding on the Arduino Nano and, um, and you need like at least one KB memory to, for the OLED display. So whenever you're having like multiple things going on, so you will hit this. And um, in order for you to, let's say, let's say we want to make auto smile, right? So let's create a function that's called just that's called auto smile, and then let's call this. Yeah, I think that should be good. Let me just save. And let's compile it to make sure we haven't made any syntax errors. Okay, so there was one. I 
Okay, so we'll just say capital, capital O. All right, I'm now going to be uploading the code. Um, I'll just make sure the, the port is fine, yeah? So um, Ish, if you can um, show the screen of the robot. So we're going to try to draw a smile um, after I upload the code in order to draw a smile here. Hopefully that works well. So it's uploading, as you can see in the share screen. And now we can see that Otto is smiling at us. All right, so I'm going to put it down and go back to the slides. OK, this is what we did. Uh, we did a smiley face. Um, just for information uh, about what those numbers are, uh, they're basically X and Y coordinates and then, um, you know, um, the number of pixels. So, you know, the first one, zero, will be the X coordinates and, y, and 10 will be the Y coordinates. So basically what I did was just draw a line like this and then um, a straight line and then a straight line up. So pretty simple. Now, let's make it move, right? So, um, I, I quite like, like separating the two because, um, um, so we did the screen and now we'll do like, you know, the uh, playing with the server motors. Um, so you would have to, again, do some of the initialization. So I'll go back to the code that we had. Yeah. And um, what we'll initialize now is uh, use a second library. So that was the humanoid library. Then you have to sort of like define the pin that you're going to use. Obviously, you could put the number directly in, um, but you know, just use some variables so that you can remember what it is. Here's where you defined um, Uto. Next, in the setup, is this initialization. So just reconstruct, passing the um, variables into your constructor. And, um, and what I've written here is like some different moves that so I've just replaced the smile because there's a smile in there already. Um, and so, what I have is, um, let's write some dev context on the screen, walk, jump, bend, and then shake the leg a little. So that will be like, you know, the little dancing move that Otto can do. There are a lot more options that you can play with. This is just an example. I'll just copy the different functions that I have. Right, so while doing that, so what I'm doing is I'm sort of combining the code for the OLED screen and then with the action that Otto is going to do. So like smiling before bend, bending or laughing before shaking the leg. And that's basically the similar type of code of what we did for the smile, but just like, you know, it, uh, a different drawing. And for the wide dev context, what I've written is just, um, yeah, dev con rocks. Um, just to show that, you know, you can also write text on the screen. It doesn't have to be like a, a drawing. Let me just compile this. All right. So I'll move this here so that um, you're going to be able to see the movement of the robot. Uh, 
And ish, if you can um, change the camera view if you haven't already done so. Then we're gonna upload the new code in. So it's uploading. And now we see some little movement from a little robot. So you should see Devcon rocks um, doing some bending. You're gonna see the shaking of legs soon. There you go. And um, and a little laugh. And it's that smiley face before we starting again. So yeah, I hope you Okay, yeah, I can. Can you see? That's better. That's better. Okay. Yeah, you probably won't be seeing the screen so much, maybe, but at least you can see the, the movement from it. Not sure if you're seeing the legs here, though. Yeah. Cool. I can also like you know unplug because I put battery in, so logically like you know I can I can unplug it right, and then let me just put it back into a good position. Then I can, you know, like make it run on battery as well, right? So so yeah, I mean you just saw it. It's just a few lines of code. It's not really that complicated. And then, um, I mean, I'm supposed to do like 45 minutes, but in 25 minutes, like, you know, we're already going through all like, like, you know, the, the, the steps that you will need. But I have some, some additional information, so I'll just turn that off. Let's go back to the slides. The additional information is like gotchas, right? So when you're coding, it's like, uh, I thought it was going to be pretty much plug and play. Uh, but then when you start to do your own thing and you don't just follow the instructions, which was adding the other display, then you start to get into, ah, OK, conflicts. Um, so so what I did there is, um, what, what I noticed is um, auto libraries already had some Adafruit uh, code. So, and they were also using dot matrix in the original version, which is not something that we're not using. So I made sure like, you know, the auto library um, doesn't include um, the, the different files because we're not going to be using them. Um, so you're going to um, users, my doc users documents and then Arduino libraries and auto do it yourself live master in order to find all the, because it's open source, right? So you can find everything and um, in, in it. And another got yours was uh, memory. I think this is an interesting one because, you know, uh, years ago it's something that we used to care about. Then obviously uh, over the years, it's something that we no longer care because we have so much memory. Um, so we didn't never had to like you know optimize uh, our code again for um, to cater for memory anymore. But when you start to work with like you know uh, microcontrollers and things, then you get back into that initial game, right? So um, interesting. What so interestingly, what I found was like um, there were different types of memory. There was flash memory, uh, static RAM, as well as EEPROM, and um, the one that bugged me a lot was a uh, static one one because that was only 2 kb of memory which was not a lot in order to um like work with the OLED display as well as like your um your arrays and and things that you're going to put into memory at one time so even though at compile time it says like you know i'm only using 41 percent of the dynamic memory but when I, when the program run then i run out of memory so how I went about um, handling that initially was like, okay, look into the uh, auto libraries code. Um, and, um, and I found out like he was using like, so every time he needed an array, he was just like creating a new one, which would create like, you know, uh, use more memory. 
So I modify the original eight to nine code in order to just like use one array um, in most of the code. So you will see that there was the old code and the new code is on the right. So I would just have one that has, I noticed it was only using like six positions anyway, um, whether it was moving up or down. So um, I just modified the one array and then moved the servers. Then I modified the same one and insert the new um, numbers into it and then move the second servers. So that helped me move a bit. So I managed to like two other lines of code with this, but it was still not enough. After a while, I still went out of memory again. Um, then what I found out is that you can actually code some of your like constant um, static variables into uh, program memory. Um, how you do that is you will see that this is the old code on the left and the new code is on the right. You have to specify um, prog mem. And uh, when you're defining your variable, and then, so especially I want like arrays, that was important. Maybe if you were just like an integer, uh, it would not be so much, but um, arrays was killing me when I was programming it. So um, so I use program, and then when you're reading from that array, then you have to specify uh, pgm underscore read underscore word, and then you put in, you know, your, the values of your array. So yeah, so that allowed me to like you know combine the OLED display and do all the different movements that I've just showed you. So moving on with my objective, the objective of the talk to show you how easy it is to program, not only program, but build and then program your own robot. And, uh, and it has been done in like in 30 minutes. So what I want you to do now is like, you know, go out, um, look at all, all the different versions that people are creating because it's created, you know, they created one version, but it wasn't meant to stay in that state. Uh, the idea was to make it open source and then for people to use their imagination and then create their own uh, version of their little robot and just use that knowledge. Um, so there are over 80 remixes out there and, um, and over 10 different configurations. So we've done the humanoid one, so the one with the um, with the hands as well. But I'm, I'm finding like, you know, uh, now that you, they have the wheel as well, which is gonna be pretty cool uh, to code um, the different movement if you have a wheel. So um, that's nice. So now it's you have to make your move and um, thank you. You respected time, you started on time, you did not go, you know, over, we did not have to, to, to show signs telling you that you need to stop. Your flow on the code was right on spot. Your presentation of the, and of course you had a very cute robot uh, with the <laughs> smile and the DevCon rocks and especially the little feet, you know, when it was doing like uh, showing how the feet move. <laughs> so that was really cool. And uh, I can see there are comments. So uh, uh, Vidush is saying that it is going to be the end of the world. This is how Skynet begins. And he's going to stockpiling toilet paper already. Uh, however, we have one serious uh, comment by Adit Santoki, who, who said it's a nice presentation. And uh, I think he read your profile because he's asking, based on your experience as a product manager, is it challenging to develop a quality product? And how do you ensure that any product meets quality requirements? Well, I believe this question is out of the scope of robotics and anything, but it targets more about, you know, your job profile and the kind of things that you, would you like to answer something? Yeah, um, sure. So, so the thing is like, it's all about like having the right uh, processes, right? So I know that when I started, you know, in the tech industry is that, you know, you have like one person that does like everything, right? Um, now, nowadays is that we're working with like, you know, UX teams. Like it's not like we have like, for example, in the company I work for is that I have one uh, person who does the UX. And then we also have like an experience cube team that we call, and it's like our experts in UX, right? Um, that we can sort of like peep into 
and get like you know some expertise ux expertise for example so um in order to make sure you have the right quality of the product like you have to dig into like some of the different experts that you can you have in your company and uh, also about making sure you do your planning correctly like you know you follow like scrum methodologies you you do your sprint planning and you ensure like you know you don't overwhelm all the devs as well um and yeah so so you need to to have the right processes and pick it into some of the experts that you you have in your team in order to ensure that the right product gets rolled out uh so um uh i'm sure that people can reach out to you on social network uh if uh, they want to ask more about uh, this product quality uh, uh ensuring product quality question uh we have one more question uh coming from well i, I did thank you for your answer and we have one more question coming from eric yes. eric durand uh you know from the mauritius makers community and yes, he's yeah in fact uh, early, earlier on during your presentation he he was uh, happy about tinkercad something that he he just found in your presentation and he's asking the question uh, with tinkercad can you change an existing dimension from an imported stl file um i've recently just played with um tinkercad i actually didn't use it for for like you know creating this i use freecad but that was something that like, I was uh, recently found and I wanted to show it because I saw how easy it was to modify things. Um I think you should be able to do it but I haven't done it myself. Um Okay. All right. So I think on the comment side uh, it is uh, uh we see general plus uh, uh also adding on uh, Eric's comment uh, da da da. So Again, uh, I must I, I must say I'm impressed, Nisha. Thirty five minutes. You've been able to cover a lot. You've been able to do a demo, and you've been able to interact with our dear viewers. Again, thanks you very much, and it was uh, it was a pleasure to have you on the platform of virtual platform of the developers conference this year. Uh, do you have a uh, some final remarks before we end this session? Would you like to say something to to I don't know fellow makers or people who watch this uh, yeah, session that's a, that's a good idea actually uh we do have like a merge maker community um that you know where we get together and we do that kind of like tinkering um as you saw like you know um uh, product management is my main job responsibilities and obviously we don't do that um at work right so um mm -hmm. and 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 but the, what happens is that you know we passionate about tech in general and um and that's what's nice to have like you know a community like the most maker community where you can discuss like all kind of like you know technologies or electronics uh 3d printing and anything that sort of interests you so feel free to you know um there's a facebook group that you can join and um and yeah and you can be part of it Cool, cool. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Nisha. Uh, Girish, your closing remarks, please. Yeah, so yeah, for me, it was, like, it was the most interesting talk of the day. Even the viewers, I think we got uh, the most views in uh, this session. I don't know if you, if you, how many if you views? That. <laughs> well, you, you, you picked uh, almost 30, 30 something. Well, okay. We, maybe, we, maybe we, it's a colleague at work actually that joined yeah, in the presentation. Yeah, you know, be... you, uh, you know, Nisha, you've been in uh, in our previous uh, DevCon conferences and uh, getting thirty people uh, into one room. You know, it's a it's a big thing. So congratulations, you had a very successful presentation. And uh, go on, Girish. It was a really nice one. I'm I'm someone really interested in robotics, so that was a great talk to me. All right. Feel you free to feel free to connect on LinkedIn, and then like if you have any other questions that you know, or um, you know, yeah, you can you can just shoot. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Uh,